Yo guys, Punk on another video. So I'm just now getting to the end of my leveling journey in Classic. I'm currently level 52, and during this process I've collected tons of items that I'm storing on my bank alt from all the mob farming that I've done throughout this time. With that, I felt inspired to make a video covering some of the items that you're going to come across in your leveling path that might have quote unquote secret value. Sometimes you'll pick up white items that you may think are vendor trash, but are actually sought after for different patterns and recipes which are relevant to the end game of Classic. This video should definitely help with understanding what to do when you pick up some of these items on your journey, and also help you afford your mount or potentially make money with investments for the future or for future patches. So without further ado friends, these are items that you shouldn't vendor while leveling in Classic WoW. Let's get into it. Alright, so the first one on this list is really well known, and you've probably heard it in other videos. It's called Wicked Claw, and it drops off of beasts across the world in high level zones, from dragons, to owls, to pterodactyls, basilisks, you name it, it drops all over the place. So a lot of people kill beasts non-stop, especially if they're farming for leather, and you're gonna come across a good amount of these. Now the reason why these are actually quite useful is because they're used in two patterns. The first is Lionheart Helm, and the second is Wolfhead's Helm. If you've seen my previous videos where I've actually covered these two helmets, both of them respectively are best in slot all the way through next, the best helmets in the game. Lionheart Helm is for Fury Warriors and Wolf's Head Helm is for Feral Druids. So these Wicked Claws are actually needed in both recipes and you need a good amount of them. For Lionheart Helm specifically, you need 40 Wicked Claws, so people are going to be gunning for these. You got a random little white item that drops all across the world that's used for the best helmet in the game. So you can imagine how everyone's trying to farm this, especially once you get to later raid tiers. It's the number one priority on a Fury Warrior to get Lionheart Helm. So there's going to be a good amount of demand around these claws. Make sure you're not vendoring these and also it might be a good opportunity to invest in them if they're cheap right now, hold on to them for a little bit and then once people are gunning for this helmet, start selling them for a markup. So that's Wicked Claws and it drops off most beasts out in the world in relatively high level zones. Okay, so this one is actually one that I wasn't aware of at all and I completely screwed up in my leveling process. Luckily, it's worth something but I guess not that much but at the same time it is actually quite lucrative considering the fact that it drops like hotcakes and you could stack tons of them. It's Large Fang and it's only worth 75 copper at its vendor sell price. I kept running out of bag space in my leveling process and just wanting to get rid of the cheapest thing in my bags just so I can pick up a green or something and I've deleted so many stacks of these. This was a mistake. These large fangs are used to make the barbaric set which is quite decent but most importantly they're used for rage potions which is the equivalent to I guess thistle tea for rogues. It's a potion that warriors can use, they'll pop it and it'll give them extra rage. Useful in PvE, in PvP, you name it, it's just all around a great consumable when it comes to playing a warrior. And I'm not kidding, these drop like absolute hotcakes, you'll have tons of them in your bags. You might delete them, you might not pick them up just because they're worth 75 copper, but don't do that. Mail them to your bank alt, stack as many as you can, and sell them in stacks of 5. In my server right now, they're selling for about 10 silver each. So a stack of 5 is 50 silver. Don't underestimate the large fangs, even though they're 75 copper each. Alright, so this item, some of you guys might be angry with me, just because you might be banking on this as a strategy to make gold in the future. But nonetheless, let's just put it out there. So the item is Small Egg, and these drop off of birds in all of the starting zones, so under level 20. In Teldrassil, Westfall, you name it. Right now, the Small Eggs are worth absolutely nothing. They're useless. But if you hold onto them till Winter Veil, which is the Christmas event coming in December, there's a couple cooking recipes that are going to be available by then in eggnog, gingerbread cookie, and herb baked egg. So the small egg is going to go from pretty much no value to decent value. And if you hoard on a ton of these, you can make a decent amount of gold or a decent amount of profit once Christmas comes around. So if you have gifts to buy for your friends, you might want to invest now in the small eggs, maybe go out and farm them, and by Christmas time you'll have enough gold to buy gifts for the whole family. Now this item right here is actually worth a lot right now relative to the market, and within a couple patches it'll be worth less, again in relation to the market as a whole. It's the giant egg, and this drops off of birds, just higher level birds similar to the small egg that we talked about earlier. The reason why this is so lucrative right now, on my server specifically, they're selling for 50 silver a pop, so if you get two of them, that's one gold. Quite lucrative. They're used to make the monster omelette, which is one of the best food buffs that you can get right now, and for people going into progress right now, specifically main tanks, 
they're going to be using this non-stop. It's also used for a cooking quest called Clamlet Surprise. This quest unlocks cooking all the way up to 300, which is probably why it's worth so much right now with so many people trying to max out on their cooking skill. So if you want to make bank on giant eggs, right now is the time to do it. Farm the hell out of these, make a ton of monster omelets, or maybe just sell them raw, and people will be buying them non-stop because they need as many food buffs as possible, or they're trying to max out their cooking. So here's another investment item for the future. It's called the Vibrant Plume. These are just feathers that you farm off of harpies and other creatures in the higher level zones. From Feralis to Ashara, and I believe Felwood as well, maybe Badlands, Winterspring. Not 100% sure, you can just check it out on Wowhead. These aren't super lucrative right now, even though they have decent auction house value, but people aren't really buying them because they're not useful. But once the Dark Moon Fair comes in, you need to hand in five of these to get 12 Dark Moon Fair tickets and gain 100 reputation with the Dark Moon Fair. So stockpiling on these and waiting for the Dark Moon Fair to come out could be a decent investment. Pretty simple and similar to farming small eggs for the Winter Veil vale event. Nothing much to say here, you farm the feathers and then keep them for the Dark Moon Fair. Okay, now sticking with feathers, here's another one. We've got the Long Elegant Feather. This drops off of the wild griffins in Hillsbrad Foothills, some of the griffins in the Hinterlands, and different mobs. Again, you can go check it out for yourself on Wowhead. These Long Elegant Feathers are actually only used for one tailoring pattern, and that's the Admiral's Hat. It's kind of random, but people love having this item for just novelty purposes. Dressing like a sailor, putting the hat on, and just basically standing in Stormwind Ironforge and looking cool, I guess. These feathers right now on my server are selling for 35 silver a pop and they have a pretty decent chance to drop. So if you're in the hinterlands or wherever you are and you see these, keep them, sell them on the auction house. Or find a tailor and get that sweet admiral's hat made for yourself. That's definitely what I'm doing. Alright, so this next item is actually really relevant to the raid content patch that we're experiencing right now and the next one as well. The item that we're talking about is the small flame sack which drops off of a whelps at I think 30 plus level range. So from Badlands to maybe Burning Steps. So the small flame sack is used in two really important recipes. The first one is Dragon's Breath Chili, which is less important right now because in most raids, a lot of the mobs are actually fire resistant and then it's used in fire protection potion, which is a pot that you can use, which absorbs a good amount of fire damage. It's not used in the greater fire protection potion, which is probably the one that most people are gonna be gunning for, but some raiders will opt for the cheaper version or they might have both and depending on the fight, they might not wanna use the more expensive ones. Nonetheless, people People are going to be wanting to make these fire protection potions regardless of whether or not the greater fire protection potions. And actually there's been kind of a meta around melee cleaves using Dragon Breath Chili when they're speed leveling through Zolfarak or whatever, since it's an AoE fire blast that helps them cleave through all of the mobs. Small flame sacks are also used for the flame deflector, which is actually just an engineering item that absorbs another 500 fire damage. In general, absorbing fire damage right now from Molten Core to Blackwing Lair is super crucial, so you can be selling a good amount of these flame sacks. Or you can be farming the flame sacks and then turning them into potions and whatnot and selling those for a profit. So if ever you're killing whelps out there in the real world and you get small flame sacks, do not sell them to a vendor, hold on to them, make them into potions, do something with them, something more productive, and it'll help you in your gold game. All right, now this one is probably something that you've already come across, and I'm sure you guys have probably caught on to it at this point that it's worth something. It's actually spider silk. So whenever you're out in the world farming spiders, you might notice that they drop spider silk. And the higher level spider that you kill, you might notice that there's actually different tiers to the spider silk. Regardless of what tier you're attaining, they actually all have decent value. In fact, they have increasing value the higher tier that you go. So on this one, we're specifically gonna focus on the high level one, the ironweb spider. Silk. This silk is used in so many leatherworking and tailoring patterns. From raid level items to bags to resistance gear to pre-raid gear, it's, it spans the whole nine yards. So throughout your leveling process, make sure that you're actually hoarding your spider silks and once you get near max level, if you get iron web spider silk, understand that it's actually worth a lot and it's quite lucrative considering it's used in all of these patterns that I'm showing on the screen right now. So spider silks, do not vendor them. Okay, so this one I actually covered in my gold making guide that I made a couple weeks ago, but let's go over it again. So these items specifically drop off of elementals. You've got elemental earth, elemental fire, elemental water, and elemental air. These can actually drop 
off of elementals from I believe level 25 plus. So if you're out in the Stone Talon Mountains and you're just killing elementals or you're mob grinding, in Arathi Highlands there's a couple decent camps with high mob density with a bunch of fire elementals just roaming around. You can farm these guys and get elemental fire, so for now let's just focus on elemental fire. This is used in a fire resistance cloak enchant which tanks are going to be looking for when tanking molten core robe of power and the most important and why it's actually so highly valued is you need one for every greater fire protection potion as i stated earlier fire protection potions are the most important thing when it comes to onyxia molten core and blackwing layer progression so guilds need as many of these as possible so while you're leveling elemental earth elemental fire elemental air elemental water these items if you're killing elementals are worth a decent amount hold on to them put them on the auction house and make a profit now this item is kind of a pain in the ass to get you're probably not going to come across it just because no one really kills these mobs at all but it's used in so many important recipes especially within classic how the word has gotten around and pretty much everyone wants to go engineering these items are going to be highly demanded it's called fuse wiring and these drop in nomergon they also drop in uh, stranglethorn veil vale off of the shredder units and i think maybe a couple other mobs that i might not be aware of but in general those are the two spots to farm them so the wiring is actually used in so many different engineering schematics we've got alarmo bot field repair bot gnomish cloaking device goblin jumper cables goblin jumper cables xl little smoky mechanical dragonling and pet bombling right now in the early early state of the classic wow economy they're actually selling for like two gold 50 silver on my server you might think oh wow that's a great farm yeah i mean they sell for decent gold but they're extremely rare they drop very very scarcely so just be wary of that before you go out and farm them that you might spend 45 minutes and not even see one so if you're killing shredders out in stranglethorn veil vale and one drops don't vendor it that's almost three gold in your inventory all right so this item is quite well known but a lot of you guys coming to vanilla for the first time might not know about it so it's actually called magic dust and most of the time while leveling up you're probably not going to encounter this just because when you're in westfall these guys are pretty scarce and generally higher level than you so you'll just stay away from them and view them as a threat but magic dust actually drops off of the dust devils in westfall you know those elementals that are just sort of roaming around and generally you're much lower level than them they might be level 20 and they just come over and two shot you basically yeah those guys those guys actually drop this item right here which is basically a castable cc you can use this in pvp in pve there's all kinds of different uses for it so while leveling up if you end up killing a couple of these dust devils and you get a couple of them keep on to them you might use them in a dungeon you might need them at some point or just pop them on the auction house all right fellas there you have it items you shouldn't vendor while leveling in classic wow as i stated in the intro this video should definitely give you some crucial information which will help your pocketbook during the leveling process there's a lot of mystery in classic wow and i'm sure you might have vendored or ignored a couple of these items already there's crafting mats all throughout the game many unassuming which can be quite useful in end game recipes if you guys know of any items that i'm unaware of or i didn't mention in this list please feel free to let me know in the comment section as usual you guys educate me on a consistent consistent basis. I really hope this video gives you guys the information you need to thrive in the market. There's tons of opportunities surrounding items like this considering the oversupply right now. So get out there fellas and seize the opportunity. That's all I got for this one friends. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell of course. You know the drill soldiers. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.